Imran, welcome. Um, let me first ask you, we have been trying to Thank do you. this interview for uh, almost two weeks now, and once your internet mysteriously cut out, the last time we were told that there was an army raid on your compound, what, 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 tell us what happened. Well, uh, look, ever since I came out of jail, uh, Farid, uh, my house is surrounded by the police. There are checkpoints. Everyone is checked who comes into my house. Uh, and, and they have to walk a distance. Uh, the, the main roads, uh, you know, uh, connecting my house are blocked. And uh, uh, one evening when I was supposed to do your interview, I suddenly uh, discovered that the, the government had announced there were 40 terrorists hiding in my house and they were going to come, the police was going to come looking for them. So I opened my house for the, for the media to come and see where these terrorists were. So that's what stopped the police raid. So unfortunately, um, you know, it's an unpredictable time. So uh, hence, I couldn't do the interview before. What, where do you think this goes? Do you worry that the elections which have been scheduled, which you were hoping to participate in, will not take place? Where, uh, tell us what, looking forward, where, what do you see happening? Well, Farid, my worry so far is about uh, our democracy is being dismantled. Uh, the two provincial assemblies in which we were governing, that's 70% of Pakistan, KP and Punjab. We dissolved our governments, and the constitution is clear, you have to have elections within 90 days. The government wouldn't hold the elections. We then had to go to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court ruled that the elections must be held within 90 days and gave the date of 14th May for the election of Punjab. The government refused. They violated the constitution and the orders of the Supreme Court. Now, my worry is that even the national elections, which are scheduled for October, I, I'm, I'm worried that even they will hold the elections unless and until they are clear that PTI, my party, won't win. Right now, our rating is above 70 percent. Out of 37 by-elections, we have swept 30. So they are petrified of elections. And because they are scared that PTI and I, I will be back into power. Everything is being done to, to, to dismantle our democracy. So right now, as we speak, over 10,000 workers have been arrested. My entire senior leadership is in jail. I'm Tuesday, I'm going to make an appearance for various bails in Islamabad. 80% chances are that I will be arrested. So right now, there's no rule of law. The judges, one of the judges cried while saying that he gave people bail and they were rearrested when they got out of the court. The Supreme Court Chief Justice, I mean, his when he says elections are to be held on 14th of May, when his decisions are discarded. So we are heading towards uh, law of the jungle. Might is right. There's right now, there's no rule of law in this country. Imran Khan, who is at the center of a political maelstrom in his country right now. Imran, you know how the story goes, that the, the army was happy to work with you in your first incarnation. In fact, they supported you, but then they found you uncontrollable, and they essentially uh, engineered your ouster, uh, and now you have taken them on openly. Um, can you, are you doing that and can you win a struggle against what is often called Pakistan's most powerful institution? You know that the way the, the saying goes that most countries have armies in Pakistan, it is the army that has a country. Look for it. I'm, how can you win by taking on your own army? I mean, even if you win, it's a firing victory. The country loses. I mean, Pakistan needs a powerful army. All you have to do is look around the Muslim world and just look at the, I mean, the devastation that is going on there. So I am a firm believer that the country needs a strong defense and needs, needs to be able to defend itself as it did in the war on terror. Because, I mean, we got ourselves into a mess and 80,000 Pakistanis died. 
and the, the army gave great sacrifices. The problem right now is, for, for, first let me just correct you, I never had a problem with the army. I worked and knowing that they were entrenched, they, the army has been a, it's a fact of 75 years, the army has had, three times they have ruled directly through martial laws. I mean, last 60 years, half has been ruled by the army and the half by the two families, Bhutto's and uh, Sharif's. So I was working with them. I was working with General Bajwa. What happened when he decided to switch horses and abandon me and, and topple my government? I still am not sure. I'm still not sure of his motives. One of them could have, he had struck a deal with the current prime minister for his extension. But I never knew what happened. I, all I know is that the last six months, uh, he just worked to, uh, to remove my government. And he's, he's openly afterwards in an interview claimed that he decided that I was too dangerous for the country. And so my government was, uh, was ousted since then. All I have said is that the solution to Pakistan's problems are in free and fair elections, because that's the only thing that would bring political stability in this country. And without political stability, our economy has just tanked. We now are in a worse situation than Sri Lanka was. I mean, we, Pakistan has never had the economy in such a tailspin as it is right now. The only way you can bring the economic stability is through political stability, which will come through elections. That's all I've been saying. Now, the problem I'm facing is that somehow the, the current lot, the, 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 what are called the PDM parties, they have aligned themselves with the establishment. And they have convinced the establishment that if there are elections, they are going to lose, which is a fact. Now. In order to keep me out, the whole democratic system is being dismantled. So when you're, you don't, the, the, the government does not listen to the Supreme Court and doesn't follow the Constitution, when op, the, the, the way they have used a pretext of, uh, of arson, they blamed us for the arson when, they, when, the, when I was grabbed from the, uh, from, the, from the High Court by the army. And the way I was grabbed, there was a there was a reaction, but they've used that reaction, unfortunately, to dismantle the party. So I mean, they have over ten thousand workers are jailed. A lot of women have been jailed, which has never happened before. There also was an attempted assassination on you, uh, Imran. D do you think that was directed by the army, and do you think you are safe now? Well, there was uh, in November three. There was a. Uh, assassination attempt, which had pre, which had preempted, I had uh, predicted, I had been warning that they're going to use this uh, so-called uh, religious fanatic who was going to, uh, uh, you know, kill me. And then just like Salman Tasir, a governor, he was killed by a religious fanatic. So they were going to use that to, to, to bump me off. And the reason was that they had lost all the by-elections and the party was getting more and more popular. So uh, I knew that my life was in danger and I had sort of spoken about it, publicly about it. Then, but subsequently, there was another attempt on my life. I was very lucky to get away. This was uh, on the 18th of March in the judicial complex. I mean, there was a perfect trap uh, to uh, have me bumped off. Uh, there, there was one other way which I preempted and already announced, you know, what. so yes, my life is in danger, you know, because uh, they feel that even if they put me in prison, the popularity of my party is at such a level right now that despite that, they think that uh, they won't be able to stop us winning.